Mike Bond joined now by the former UFC bantamweight champion, Cody Garbrandt, who will be fighting Davidson Figueredo next week, UFC 300. Cody, we are in the final stretch, man. Days are getting close. How's it feel right now? I feel amazing. You know, just finished up uh, the last hard strength and conditioning, followed up by MMA, you know, practice. Feeling sharp, fast, even though the weight's low, energy's high, firing all cylinders. Man, I'm just excited. Excited to be a you know week away from weighing in. Something I've always pictured, envisioned, and won that fight. Stylistically, I love it. Um, he's an exciting fighter. I'm an exciting fighter. Both former world champions. Um, you know, just it's it's the right timing. You know, obviously in the past there was a reason why the fight didn't happen. You know, only God knows why. You know, I was I got contracted COVID and, and had some health issues after that. And, you know, and it was in the place of my life where I was at. And now it comes. You know, nearly four years later. Man, I feel great, you know, just excited, present in the moment and just excited to capitalize on this opportunity. Yeah, and you were one of the first fights added to this card. And I know after the last one, you said you talked to Sean Shelby like in the hallway and pretty much set up right there. Were you like 100% confident in that moment, this fight's happening on the state, this opponent, or was there like any leeway in between you saying that when it actually became official? You know, Sean Shelby is one of the, you know, greatest people I've met in this, you know, in the UFC, I would say in, in, in my life, um, he doesn't sugarcoat anything. It's either yes or no. He doesn't say, you know, and or lead you on. He's, he's straight to the point, man. He's just an honest, honest individual every time with me. Um, you know, so he came back after the fight, you know, I was in the medical tent getting checked, you know, after make sure everything was all right, you know, and, um, we've had a great relationship since signed to the UFC. Um, you know, and that's what I said. I said, man, he's like, I like that fight. It's great. You know, let's get it done. So I said, he'll work on his end, you know, and I know obviously it, it trickles up, you know, the Dana and Hunter, uh, but, you know, something that Sean, you know, I, I got this fight because Sean, Sean battled for me uh, to get this fight, um, you know, against the former world champion, ranked eighth in the division, top 10 guy. So for me, it puts me right back into title contention. Not overlooking it, not stepping forward, you know, not trying to be there, but this is where I belong. These fights, you know, they, they motivate me um, to train, you know, even harder, you know, even harder. And just there's more opportunity. There's more um, on the line to, to gain, you know, um, with a fight like this. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get into the actual matchup in a sec, but uh, it gets announced and then it's like a few weeks or so and they reveal kind of the fight order and you guys get announced as opening the entire card. What was your reaction to that? Like, do you take it as a compliment because they obviously want to set the tone with you two or were you thinking you might be higher up or somewhere else on this card? You know, for me, I'm filled with gratitude. Very thankful to be on UFC 300. Thankful to be able to be healthy enough to pursue this dream first and foremost, you know, so getting announced first on the fight works in my favor. I'm up early. I train early. I already got three sessions in today. It's, you know, almost two o'clock. So, you know, my day is basically winding up. So 3 p.m. we fight, we open it up. And it also says what, you know, the drawing power that I can have, be able to put people in the seats, you know, from the first bell. It's hard to get there from three in the afternoon and stay till 11, you know, even, even myself, that's, it's, I've never been to a first fight in the UFC uh, <laughs> to even watch, to speculate, um, but as a, as a spectator, but, um, you know, for me, it's, it says a lot, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited for what, what the UFC is doing. I understand what Dan and, and, and the brass Hunter want to do is, is have people in that venue from the start to the finish. And, uh, you know, I can guarantee that I'm going to go out and put on the best performance of my life and, and put on a fight like I always do. Yeah. And I think like, it must be the upside, right? You know, exactly when you're fighting pretty much on these cards, like people may not know when you're in the back there warming up, they could say, you're going to go out in 15 minutes. The fight ends in a minute and they're like, Hey, you're walking now. Pretty much the only times, you know, exactly when you're fighting is if you're the first fight of the night or the first fight on the main card. You're right. You know, so it's either the first night, you know, the first fight, like you said, or the, you know, first fight on pay-per-view. Um, for me, it's, 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 that's the thing. It takes a guessing game out of it. Like, all right, like you said, like, you know, the, the worst thing is like when you think you're ready and you're warming up and they're like that fight ends right, you know, first round knock or finish or whatever happens in that fight. And then you come back, you're walking in three, you're like, Oh, and then it's like, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, being with yourself to prepare. Okay. You know, me and my team have structuralized and, and, and got into like, all right, here we have X amount of time here. Here's our warm up, broken down. We've been doing that, 
all camp, everyone, you know, we'd be doing back in, you know, the locker rooms for the fight leading up and just getting that lung blow out, everything we knew, need to do and, and, and go there on time. So uh, for me, I'm, I'm excited to know about the card like this. Yeah, it's great. And you can finish. You'll be done early. You can go for dinner. You can do whatever you want that day. Are you going to like stick around? Do you need to see this card in person after your fight or do you go hang out with family friends? Yeah, like my, my family and friends are all in town. They come in town. So we just all come back to my house. We order a bunch of food. We watch the card. You know, I got my dogs, my son, you know, my family, friends all together. It's just, it's great. I mean, you know, a fight in Vegas, live in Vegas, not a fight in Vegas. It's, uh, it, it's quite the uh, advantage to be able to, you know, fight, do your, you know, post media win stuff and then come home and enjoy the rest of the card. So like I said, very thankful and grateful I'm fighting early and, and going to be home by, you know, dinner time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as far as, you know, this fight in particular, just how is the confidence different than maybe if this fight happened a couple fights ago or one fight ago, like being back on this winning streak now, having some momentum, do you feel that in like your confidence and your training, uh, all those kind of things? You know, momentum's everything in life, especially in this career. Um, you know, what I'm thankful about is that, you know, I don't feel like I'm too different of a fighter, maybe more collected, you know, more, um, you know, in the moment instead of like looking for what's next, what's next, what's next. And um, for me, it's about the, the, the mentality, you know, the mental fortitude brought into this, you know, what I overcame, what I was able to do coming from, you know, world champion to the setbacks to, to winning a few and losing it, you know, so it's up, down, up, down. But, you know, for me, what I'm, I'm happy about and excited about is, you know, is the mental fortitude that I bring inside this um, octagon where I'm at in my life and my career. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I see Davis Davidson chirping and talking all kinds of crazy shit, you know, let him do that. You know, that's, and, I, and I, I was that, I was that person one time when I didn't believe myself, I had to talk more, you know, so let him do the talking, you know, I'm, I'm working, I'm training, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. So I think that this version of myself is more dangerous than it's ever been. Yeah. And it must be nice. You kind of alluded to it earlier, but you're fighting for something here, right? In terms of like moving up, like all due respect to Brian Kelleher and Trevin Jones, but it felt like in those fights, you were the one that was fighting to protect something more so than gain something. Yeah. And those are more dangerous fights than, you know, mm -hmm. for me, it's like, I, you have more to lose in both those fights, you know, like yep. a, a loss to really set you back there, you know, and not saying that I'm focused on thinking on a loss with Davis. It could happen, you know, it's an MMA and it's, it's a very crazy sport. But for me, it just, like I said, it gets me to do the extra, you know, not that I have to be pushed to do the extra, but it makes me really grind down and camp and, and focus and, and be just, and be present for what the opportunity is to come. I've been a world champion. I understand what comes with being a world champion. Um, and for me, it's about taking care of my family, you know, set myself up for the future, um, you know, so I can ride off in the sunset, you know. I don't have to fight until it's past my time and, and tarnish the legacy that I've built, you know, for, for a decade now as being a professional over a decade. Um, for me, it's about just going in there, getting the right fights, you know, and I, I always love these fights. These fights for me are, are, are obviously handpicked by me because I, I, I like the, the challenge that it presents to itself. You know, he's come up to 35, looked okay in his last fight, but you know, um, you know, I'm excited to push him later and harder into those rounds to see, you know, let's see how hard he worked this fight. You know, let's see how hard he worked at 35, you know, because, you know, at 35, you have to cut as much weight. You're at you know, 25, you have to do the extra runs and the weight, you know, and, you know, it's 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 much different, you know. Uh, so I'm excited to see what he brings to the table inside the octagon. Yeah. Was there anything you were able to pick and keep from the first camp for him? I know the circumstance is so different with it being a flyweight, a title fight, all these things completely different than now, but is it like too far in the past or was too many things different and him coming back up now for you to be like, Hey, I, there was a lot of useful things from whatever part of that camp I was able to do that I could apply to this one. You know, for me that I, I was such in a different mindset and in, in, in that camp or when I was at in that period of my life that I don't really recall too much. It was just about focusing on me and getting back to, to myself, you know, coming off a huge knockout win of, over a Sun Tzu, um, had momentum and was taken away. So that's kind of like, it's been the story of the last, you know, a few years, you know, but when you see when I had momentum, 
2016 unranked world champion the same year. Um, it's it's good, and I'm happy. I'm healthy, grinding. You know, enjoying being a martial artist, enjoying growing as a martial artist, as a human. Um, just ev everything, man. I I have no complaints in life. Like my son's healthy, my family's good. I'm about to fight next week. You know, on a huge card. So I don't take anything that I've learned or watched. I watched his last two fights. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the Miranda fight, I think he broke. He he definitely broke uh, in that fight, and uh, the Rob Bob fight I think that was great. You know, um, to get a lot of look of that, he had to wrestle a lot. He was able to win the position. You know, um, in the third round, I I think that it's really catapulted him to win the fight. But nothing that stood out to was like, oh, this guy is you know something special. You know, mm -hmm. he's average at that. You know, I feel like my skill sets are way higher than him on um, across the board. The wrestling, the striking, the conditioning, um, the speed for sure, and the lucidity, um, being inside the octagon, he'll, he'll see, you know, he'll see. And I'm just excited to go in there and push his pace on him and just drought him in there. Yeah. So would you say, do you feel like he's maybe a lesser version of himself at bantamweight or is it too hard to tell? Like it's just one fight. Rob Font is ridiculously durable. So is it like kind of hard to get a full read at what he's like as a bantamweight just based off that fight? Yeah, you know, Rob's durable, great, great fighter. Really like Rob as a person. You know, obviously I, I fought him uh, coming mm -hmm. back from COVID on a five round fight. Uh, wasn't my best outing, but, you know, hats off to him in his camp. But I just don't think that Rob mixed it, mixed it enough in that fight to really threaten Davison. And, you know, Davison, you know, was, you know, kept, you know, a good defense, movement, you know, landed some overhands and got some takedowns. The, and won the positioning of the fight, you know, um, didn't throw high volume, you know, wasn't really pushing the scrambles, you know, Rob really settles on like, all right, getting taken down because he's long, he can go underneath and, and elevate to get up. So he'll get that position. But in the third round, I think that was able to, Davidson was able to get his hips down, kind of lock a position and mm -hmm. kind of rode him out. Um, majority of that round um, from what I remember from the fight, uh, watching it and, and picking it apart. Um, but yeah, me, I mean, it just, I'm excited to just go put it all together, put it all together and, and see how much this dude is able to, to keep up. You know, that's something I've been focused on um, this whole camp. It's just doing what I do best, my strengths, you know, and my strengths are definitely his weaknesses and just, you know, getting ready for a 15 minute high action pace fight. If it needs to be also a, a fight that I can go out there and crack him one or two times, knock him out, finish him, submit him, out wrestle him, dance on him, swag on him, anything that I want to do. I feel very confident. You know, I hope that he's had a great camp. He comes in, you know, healthy, motivated, and hungry to put out a performance like I am. Yeah. And you obviously have to ask, cause you alluded to it earlier, you know, the crazy shit he's been talking essentially. I think he called you mentally fragile was like the quote yeah. that was making the rounds. What was your reaction to seeing that? You know, that that's why I think that's and I have been there. Like when you're mentally weak and you don't believe in yourself, you have to speak more and and talk more and try to um, get into your opponent's head, you know, or, or try to. But for me, I've been that person. I've been that. I know. I know what deep down inside what that is. That's that's insecurity of yourself, um, having to you know to to say those things to maybe just to pump yourself up, get yourself ready. But also, and then he thinks too, it's going to get in my head. So. He thinks the way to victory is to get into my head by doing this. Go ahead, focus on all of this. Because remember, you got to back up that talk as well. You know, you got to back that up. And if I do recall, um, he's missed weight a few times, correct? Yeah. That's right there. That's that's being a pussy. That's the biggest mentally weak block you can ever do. Like you have to make weight. You don't make weight, so you quit on yourself. There's no even, I'm not even in front of you or your adversary is not in front of you throwing strikes and taking you down and trying to, you know, put an elbow through your skull. You broke by yourself. So he has to ingest that and understand that he's broke before even be getting in the octagon. You know what I mean? So uh, maybe that's something that he has going on mentally um, that he, like I said, he has to foreshadow or put out there to try to get in my head, but I already know what it is. And, you know, I've, I've been focused all camp, train hard, train like a madman, healthy and just hungry. But uh yeah, I mean, it's different, you know, I try yeah, he gets he's trying to hype up the fight, but 
you know, he's all buddy buddy who's sending the DMs and stuff. But uh, man, I, I I'm at a different place in my life. You know, I'm just I focus on being the best martial artist I can, go out there and do my job. You know, come out of that octagon healthy, uninjured, and uh, rinse and repeat it. Yeah, what's he DMing you? Oh, I mean, no, he uh, he tagged me in some videos of him doing okay. some pull ups. <laughs> his weak ass workouts that he does. And I was like, Hey man, you're scaring me, dude. You're scaring me. Uh, you're looking fat. You're looking, you know, a little tubby. And, uh, you know, he just puts a laugh face back. So I, I get it. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to get in the head, do do that. But mentally weak, man, you broke on the scale. You broke on yourself, you know, you, you broke. And that's, that's, that's the men's that I feel that's a huge mental Thing that you're always gonna have because you got beat by the scale. You didn't get beat by an opponent. You didn't get by you, you beat you broke on yourself. You gave up on yourself. So if you're able to give up on yourself, what do you think that I'm gonna do to you? And then when I'm constantly in your face, punching the speed, you can't hit me. I'm taking you down. I'm kicking the shit out of you. Like, what are you gonna give up? Just like he's done in the Moreno fight. Moreno broke him. He broke him in there, got him hurt, then finished him. And uh, I don't see it being any different uh, next weekend with our fight. For sure. And I want to respect, you know, the challenge and the focus on this fight and everything. So I'll just ask you more of like a general question on your thoughts on just the state of the division right now. It seems like we're going to get Sean O'Malley, who I know you want to fight one day against Marab next. Uh, how do you think that fight goes? And then just some of the other contenders out there, we got Aldo coming back, you know, we got a bunch of other big names. What do you just make it the, the division right now? Yeah. I mean, I think the, for a fact, the anyway division is the most stacked division um, in, in, in the UFC, uh, with the, the Marab O'Malley fight, you know, you could say Marab's this cardio machine, this wrestling machine, how he's going to defend the takedown. If you look at all his fights, Marab's been hurt, you know, a lot in the striking. He's been hurt in the Mariah's fight. He was hurt and Henry hurt him, you know what I mean? And Henry can't bust a grape, you know. Um, he's been hurt in a lot of those fights, but he's tough. He's mentally tough. He's the fortitude to be able to push through and able to do that. Um, to keep going, it, it, it's it's a balance, you know. Is, is is Sugar Sean able to, you know, sniper him, crack him enough to where it, it, it knocks him out, or is it going to be one of those things where Rob gets robbed or rocked and keeps pressing forward and getting the takedown like he's showed many times in, in his career that he's able to do? Um, so that fight is pretty intriguing to me as well, just to see how it unfolds. You know, if if Sugar can keep him from taking him down and doing what Marab does over five rounds, which Marab can do that, but also can Marab stay away from, you know, the height and reach distractions that they have, you know, the range and find his timing for the takedowns and not get sniped coming in. Who knows? I mean, that's an interesting fight um, for the division, I think for the fans as well. Yeah, definitely. Is Sean being more successful than he thought? Like when you guys, you know, were talking to yourself, did you think he would, you know, beat Jan, that he'd beat Aljo, that he'd beat Cheeto? He didn't beat Jan. So let's, let's be honest. That. He didn't beat <laughs> yeah, He was gifted no. that. Uh, he was sure. gifted that. But Jan, you know, he, he's, he's way different too. Uh, his last few fights after Aljo beat him. The Aljo fight, I think Aljo just pushed race, you know, too bad. Fast back to Bantamweight. Those weight yeah. cuts really took a toll on him. You know, as a champion, they want to keep you busy, but, you know, and and obviously right before you see, you know, you know, Aljamain looked right before the punch, you know, like he knew he was, came right in, you know, right in front of him, sharp shot him, caught him, you know. Um, so, you know, good on Sugar Sean to be the champion, to be Aljamain, you know, Aljamain had a great run, um, but I'm not too, you know, the Cheeto fight was, you know, you know, it was so so for me. You know, it was um, you know obviously his first title defense. He went five rounds against the guy that gave him his first loss. Um, but then the backstory: Cheeto didn't have the best camp, was injured going in. Who knows? So I mean, I, I think this Marab fight is going to be pretty interesting uh, to see how legit Sugar Sean is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that yeah. it, it'll pose a lot of the. The question is like, all right, can he take, you know, stop the takedowns? Can he, you know, go uh, the distance with a higher pace fight? Cheeto didn't try to take one takedown. You know, I'm saying this is mar mixed martial arts. You know, it, it's it's grueling and it's tough to 
to do that wrestling and the punch and the takedowns to hold them down and then come back up and your arms are full of lactic acid to keep your speed and your movement and your breathing. Um, you know, and you, you see the fighters that are doing that, able to mix that together, are having such higher success rates and wins and also finishes because their adversaries that they're fighting aren't used to that up, down, up, down, up, down, and then they grind because they're not training that way. Oh, they're sparring. All right, we're sparring, but are you sparring in the cage? Are you getting good looks? Are you having a guys take, you know, do takedowns? Are you doing takedowns? You know, are you doing the whole martial arts? You know, so we'll see, you know, and, and, and the wrestling part, you don't see a lot of uh, MMA fighters wanting to wrestle, just pure wrestle. You know, I think wrestling is the best conditioning that you can have for mixed martial arts. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. There's a lot of unknowns and exciting fights, matchups, you know, from the champion to the contenders and uh, throughout the whole division. Yeah, this division's insane. So I guess this will be kind of a good way to end it. Um, obviously, you know, you got this fight coming up. Who knows what the rest of the year will hold? But January, once that rolls around, that's going to be the 10-year anniversary of your UFC debut, Cody, which is yeah. kind of wild to think about. Where do you think you are by January? If you could guess, probably a couple of fights by then. Like, what would be your dream scenario when you're celebrating that 10-year anniversary where the state oh, of your career is? You know, this is about to be my 20th professional fight, yep. 15th professional fight with the company ufc so you know i'm grateful it's been you know i i, I was a young adult grew up through here i was 25 years old as a world champion undefeated so you know a lot of people got to see me grow up and in my career and have the ups and downs and just adversity overcome you know life obstacles let alone some setbacks with, with the losses here i am at 32 more motivated hungry than ever you know to to make another run you know um, I don't want to look past this fight, but hopefully, you know, another fight or two before, before January. So it'd be nice to have some, uh, you know, more wins. I know that September they're coming to the sphere. That'd be cool to fight in the sphere, um, you know, and, and Vegas as well. So, you know, we'll, you know, we'll see after this win, you know, how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, but I like to have probably the, the summer to, to enjoy with my son, you know, he's getting older, he just turned six. So I like wow. to take him to the beach or a little vacation. To do something like that, you know, before school starts, it back up again. Um, so I think a September fight would be good for me. And then we'll see, you know, after that. Perfect. Love it, man. All right. Well, I've taken enough time here, uh, time from you today, Cody. Really appreciate it, man. And uh, I'll be down in Vegas on Tuesday. So I'll see you for this whole crazy right. fight week, man. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, really right appreciate on. I'll see you there. Safe travels. Okay, thank you, Cody. Appreciate